many of us are here on a rainy and cloudy work thing speaks to the fierce opposition in BC to pipelines and tankers on our coast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, name is Laura, my name is Laura Cornish and I'm a local volunteer with Lead Now uh, dossier and I, we've also organized this with the Dogwood Initiative. And I'm here today because I'm fiercely opposed to pipelines and tankers on our coast. You know, this is dirty oil. This is dirty oil. Thousands of citizens gathered in Victoria to voice their opposition. And we're here today to build on that momentum and to show our leaders that we do not support pipelines and tankers on our coast. The Liberals have shown some uh, support for this position, and they have put requirements on a tank to pipeline to our coast. But this this suggests that there is a you know, you can put a cost on our coast, and I don't think that's acceptable, and I don't think many of you do either. And they have not yet banned my blended tankers on our coast. And the NDP have come out with a really strong position on Enbridge Pipeline, and we're hoping they're going to also come out with a strong position against Kinder Morgan. So I'm really proud of these seats. What? When? 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 Well, we will. That's what we want to know. across BC. Over 3,000 people have officially yeah. RSVP'd. We expect the numbers to be much higher. To give some perspective, there are only about like 85 offices, so to have actions of 67, I think, really speaks to the very intense and fierce opposition from a diversity of British Columbians. And um, so we're here to build on that momentum. And uh, to get us started, I also just want to um, introduce and make sure everyone knows that uh, the local MLA, Spencer Chandra Herbert, who's a... Uh, for the West End here is welcoming us in this community and has invited coffee and cookies. And I'll be turning over uh, the, the microphone to him to say a few words. And I'd also like to introduce Adrian Carr, who's a local council member of the city of Vancouver. Woo and so, so they're both here showing their support. And so I'm going to turn it over to them to say a few words, and then I'll say a few more words to wrap up. We'll make sure we get a picture. Um, and then I know this is the lunch break for a lot of you and you need to get back to the office, so we'll, we'll wrap this up. But if you could hold on for a few words from um, Spencer Chandra Herbert and from Adrian Carr, and then a picture, and then you can go. Okay? <laughs> and there's coffee and cookies. Okay, so first I'm going to turn it over to your local MLA. Oh. Press that button. Yeah. Okay, hello. Well, for our guests, welcome to Vancouver West End. We are used to having many sorts of rallies and protests and community actions like this one. Uh, this is the first one we've had outside of my office, so welcome. Uh, I appreciate it. I didn't quite know what to wear to a rally outside of one Owen's office. Uh, but what do you do? So we thought hot chocolate and some cookies might be a nice way to welcome you on this wet uh, and kind of cold day. So we're here about pipelines, we're here about tankers, we're here about environmental sustainability, we're here about our community. Uh, last uh, Monday night I was across the way at the West End Community Centre with the Stanley Park Ecology Society. They had a great event with uh, Ben West and the Wilderness Committee uh, about what the impact of an oil spill could be on Stanley Park. That to me really illustrates why we have such great concerns about pipelines like the proposed Trans Mountain one and about Enbridge. Obviously Enbridge is number one right now. It's in the process. They've made their pitch and we believe it needs to be stopped. There's no way in. So what do we believe we've got to do? One, currently our current provincial government signed away our rights as a province to make a decision on Enbridge or Kinder Morgan. We think, yes it is shameful. Our current government said We'll accept whatever Stephen Harper and the federal conservatives decide. So what we would do, should we form government next May, is we would tear up that agreement, say no way. And that stance is the same for Kinder Morgan and the proposal that they want to bring forward. Now they haven't gone into the initial stages of that yet, which is why you've yet to hear from us on our official position on that saying yes or no, 
we believe that they should have the right to put forward their proposal. We'll assess it, and given our concerns about Enbridge, I think we're going to have a lot of tough questions for Enbridge about what they want to do, and you'll see us take a position officially when that comes out. But for, for you to know where I stand personally, I hear a lot of concern from West Enders. I hear a lot of concerns from the City of Vancouver. I know the City of Vancouver passed a resolution. The Union of Eastern Municipalities passed a resolution. And British Columbians, by and large, want to make sure that our coast is protected, it's clean. We want to make sure that our, our natural environment, which is what we're known for, the greenest city, which we're attempting to be, is maintained and is grown. Because there's no way we can do that if we just rely on oil and So I don't want to take too much more of your lunch break. I know we have other speakers, but I'm keen to hear from you. I'm keen to work with you. I'm keen to be your, keen to be your representative on these issues. Because even now, with the current oil tankers coming through our, uh, our under the Lionsgate Bridge here in Vancouver, I worry that we have uh, little ability to deal with what could happen if there were an, earthquake, uh, an oil spill even now. And that's at the current level of uh, oil being shipped under our, uh, under our Lionsgate Bridge. So, Are you taking the position uh, of no? Uh, I explained my position, sir, and you can ask me. We'll have our conversations, and yeah, if you no, listen to my speech, I, I, I share clear with enough. what I had to say. So in terms of where we go, we need to respect our First Nations communities, because as I saw in Victoria when I was over at the, the rally on Monday, we know there's fierce opposition in First Nations communities. And BC has done a pretty poor job of working with First Nations communities uh, in our history. That needs to change. So, anyways, just a few remarks from me. I'm pleased to work with you. Let me know what you say. Bring your neighbors into this conversation because we've got a long way to go before decisions are made on Enbridge and even a longer way to go before decisions would be made on Kinder Morgan. So, thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to your local councillor, Adrian Carr. Okay, thanks everyone. And first of all, let me just uh, thank uh, Spencer Chandra Herbert uh, for uh, allowing us to be here in front of his office and gather here in a positive move uh, for a crude oil tanker free West Coast. <laughs> Uh, I also want to acknowledge that we are on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples um, and to particularly say that I am so unbelievably impressed by the leadership that they have played on this issue. I was uh, uh, very honored to be, in fact, uh, an official witness at the signing of the Slaywood Tooth First Nations, um, the signing of the uh, Fraser Declaration, uh, which which was their land in the sand around saying no uh, to the Kinder Morgan pipeline as well, of course, as the Enbridge pipeline, and in fact, the any pipeline uh, that brings crude oil to BC. This is my line in the sand. I just have to be clear with you. As an individual, I think that this is the most compelling issue facing our generation and that we have an absolute duty to our children, to all future generations, to say no yes. to the export of crude yeah. oil. And yes, to the slowing down of the tar sands, not the speeding up of the extraction of that tarry bitumen, um, and the shift in our society to one which is a sane path that depends on renewable energy, not fossil fuel energy. is the only political party in all of Canada um, that has said no to the export of crude bitumen from the tar sands by pipeline into tankers off our coast that says no at all three political levels, the local level, the provincial level, and the federal level. Woo! We hope that our political leadership will actually nudge others along that path. Uh, and I think that there's a huge amount of sympathy, um, uh, certainly that I've seen amongst uh, members of the NDP at all three levels as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm expecting, I'm hoping that that will be uh, an outcome. Um, you know, what are the impacts and why are we so clear about it? I, I, you know, I, we just don't need to look at the studies. There is clear um, and compelling evidence 
that we need to say no now. And the first is that what we're talking about is bitumen. We're talking about the dirtiest oil on the planet. Uh, they cannot be piped without being combined with chemicals. Uh, when a spill, at first, they're highly corrosive, so pipeline leaks will be a matter of course. And when those happen, we end up with chemicals that gas off that are highly toxic and persistent. Do you know that the people down at the Kalamazoo River where there was a spill from Enbridge couldn't even go back in their homes and collect their clothes because they stank so badly? Um, and the bitumen itself is very tarry and heavy and it sinks into the water. Scientists are saying you cannot clean this up. It's not a matter of having the world's best cleanup technologies. This stuff will stay persistent in the bottoms of the oceans, in our beaches, and I have to tell you, I, I was born here in, in this city. I grew up playing on the beaches of Stanley Park every day in the summer. I cannot imagine tarry bitumen stuck in those sands and what that would mean to our quality of life. When I ran for council, I ran because I really felt strongly compelled by the greenest city agenda that we are aiming to be the greenest city in the world by 2020. We cannot be the greenest city and be the world's export port for Bitumen to China. So I was very happy to work at the council table towards motions that would lead us down the path of finally saying, as a council and the first city council to say so, no to the Kinder Morgan expansion pipeline project. I think we just need to say finally that this is just the beginning. All of you here, boy, you warm my heart. Uh, I don't care about the rain or how cold it is out. You know, we're going to be spending some cold, rainy days together uh, over the next while. It's going to take that to stop them. There's vested money and big time money in this, and a federal government that's absolutely supportive and pushing these projects. So we're going to have to work together. We're going to have to build our group. We're going to have to make it fun so it can be sustainable and see that change happen. Thank you so much for coming out. Okay, can we both continue that round of applause to thank our political leaders, Adrian Carr and Spencer Chandra Herbert. Okay, the next part of the agenda is the very important group picture. And this is important because we need to show the rest of British Columbia and the rest of Canada that the opposition here is fierce, it's big and it's diverse, so this may take a moment to gather everyone together, but it's very important that we get a good picture. And if you guys have cell phones and those awesome social media things, which tend to be kind of important, if you could use the hashtag DefenderCoast when tweeting, Instagramming, Facebooking, all of those wonderful things, that would be greatly appreciated. So, if everyone could now gather on this side of the sidewalk facing the street, and all those who don't want to be in the picture and want to uh, have a camera can face us and we'll get the picture <laughs> and the banner in front. Everybody else want to be on the banner? <laughs>